From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Afternoon Edition. And right now on the Afternoon Edition, new fallout following the terrifying Alaska Airlines flight after a Boeing jetliner suffers an in-flight blowout. Good afternoon. I'm Ryan Yamamoto. Right now, more than 100 Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets are grounded as the FAA and the NTSB investigate what exactly went wrong. This all happened when an Alaska Airlines flight traveling from Portland, Oregon to Southern California had to make an emergency landing. This happened Friday night after a plug door blew off. You can see it right there. Alaska Airlines says it expects it will be canceling flights for days. And according to FlightAware, the airline reported more than 100 cancellations today and after nearly 170 yesterday. Here in the Bay Area, 14 Alaska Airline flights have been canceled at SFO at Oakland International. Two have been canceled. At San Jose, the airline has canceled six flights so far. Meanwhile, we're getting new images of the damaged plane, and officials say that missing door plug could be the key to that investigation. That has been found in the backyard of, of a Portland home, but they say the cockpit voice recorder was erased. As Chris Van Cleve reports, this is not the first snag for Boeing's 737 MAX 9. Our first look at the crippled Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9. Investigators say damage like this mangled seat has been found in nearly every row. Nicholas Hoke was on the flight Friday night. A loud boom or almost like a mini explosion um, happens abruptly. It was a 63-pound piece of the plane known as a plug door blowing out at 16,000 feet, leaving a gaping hole forcing the 171 passengers and six crew to don oxygen masks. In Alaska, uh, triple to a declared emergency. We're descending down to 10,000, and we need to return back to Portland. Saturday, the FAA grounded all 737 MAX 9s in the U.S., 171 of them for further inspections. Boeing says it fully supports that decision, and safety is our top priority. In March 2019, the MAX was grounded for 619 days after two deadly crashes linked to a design flaw in the plane's flight control systems killed 346. The plane is still here at the Portland airport. It's been pulled over by a hangar where investigators have been working. You can see where that plug door is missing. The door was found late Sunday night. NTSB chair Jennifer Homendy. What happens if it had been at cruise altitude? At cruise al altitude? Uh, we could have lost the aircraft. At that point, the pressure differential is so great that the explosion would have been extremely violent, extremely. And luckily, no passengers were seated directly next to the section of that plane that blew off. The NTSB says when that piece, when that piece did blow out, it did so with so much force, it ripped open the locked, fortified cockpit door 26 rows away. Boeing is planning a safety summit. That will happen tomorrow. Robotaxi company Cruise is offering to pay $75,000 to settle the investigation into an October crash involving a pedestrian. The California Public Utilities Commission eventually pulled Cruise's driverless testing permit. Cruise, which is owned by General Motors, then pulled all of its driverless cars off the road. In addition to the money, Cruise says it is also offering to share more data with regulators. Cruise sent us a statement saying the company is, quote, committed to rebuilding trust with our regulators, increased transparency and cooperation with the CPUC, and providing the data and information the commission needs to ensure that AV service is safe, equitable, and accessible. The San Francisco Board of Supervisors Rules Committee is discussing a controversial resolution today calling for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. The committee is expected to approve it and send it to the full board for a vote tomorrow. And a group of health care workers held a rally at City Hall this morning in support of the resolution. They also staged a die-in to highlight the number of medical workers from all over the world killed by Israeli bombings and airstrikes in Gaza. They say they hope the growing number of ceasefire resolutions can pressure government leaders up to the White House to end the war as quickly as possible. Nearly every single medical system, hospital, infrastructure has been destroyed in Gaza. There's very little to nothing left, and what does exist doesn't even have the capacity to take care of the people that need all of the help right now. 
Supervisor Dean Preston, the son and grandson of Holocaust refugees, introduced the resolution just over a month ago. After some debate, some amendments were added, including one that calls for a two-state solution. It also calls for the immediate release of all Hamas hostages and condemns anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and anti-Palestinian rhetoric. Turning to first alert weather right now, live look at the Golden Gate Bridge. A chilly start to start the weekend. This morning, we spotted frost on the roofs and windows of cars in the South Bay. This is at the Capitol Expressway Auto Mall in San Jose. Meteorologist Darren Peck is tracking the cold temps and when the next round of rain is expected to hit. Woke up with a big batch of cold air this morning and a frost advisory. We can visualize how this is going to play out over the next couple of days. Won't need the frost advisory for Tuesday or Wednesday, but by Thursday we might. Another batch of cold air is going to come in. Thursday will probably be as cold as this, but it'll be short lived. It might just be one day. The real focus is not necessarily the cold air at this point. It's timing the bands of rain. And we're going to do that in more detail coming up in the complete first alert forecast. But you can see tomorrow. There's the leading edge. We're going to have a weak little cold front move across in the morning. We're not going to get much out of that. But on Wednesday, the follow up to that system does come through a little more focused on the middle of the day. And that one gives us perhaps a little more rain. There's another one for next weekend. So coming up in the complete first alert forecast, we're going to look at all three of them in more detail. We'll slow it down and we'll get you caught up on what to expect. And the city of Oakland is investigating three deadly shootings. The most recent one happened yesterday morning around 745. This happened on Plymouth Street, not far from there. A woman was then killed on San Leandro Street at around 545 Saturday night. The third was a store clerk on Linden Street, only a block away from McClyman's High School. Da Lin spoke to his family, friends and neighbors about this senseless loss. The family identified the murder victim as 46-year-old Majed Alazani. The robbery happened on Saturday night just after 8 o'clock inside Orlando's market. The family tells me his brother owns the corner store and Majed had worked there for years. I want them to remember him as a hard-working man from the Middle East trying to live the American dream and he was just doing to provide for his family. Family friend Bazuri Hassan says Majed came from Yemen. His wife and four kids live near the store. Unbelievable because the family, the kids, everybody have to suffer. Bazuri says he learned from the family the robbers were a couple of young people. It's unclear why they shot Majed during the robbery and how much they got away. A neighbor's door camera recorded one gunshot. Police say family members did not wait for the ambulance and drove Majed to the hospital themselves. He died a short time later. They've had ATMs yanked out of it to the point where they weren't dealing with ATMs for a while. Um, there have been several incidents in the past of people trying to come in here and rob the store. Travis Charles lives across the street from the market and has known Majed for almost 12 years. He says Majed was a generous man and sold him a car last March, even though he didn't have enough money. He needed a car to get to work. I gave him 1500 as a down payment and every time I got paid, I gave him a thousand here, 500 here. He never, he never rushed me, never, uh, bugged me. Many neighbors and longtime customers are heartbroken. They say Majed was a kind man. I've seen his family grow up and his kids are, he has a beautiful family and I just feel awful for him. Missouri is angry over the loss of a friend. He's fed up and wants the mayor to declare a state of emergency. Get some National Guard out here, get the military, try to tackle the situation. If the city doesn't do more, he worries more people will die non-stop, everyday robberies, killing. I mean, it's like a third world country. Oakland police say no one has been arrested in this homicide case.